Welcome back to Sci-Fi Book Trek. Today we'll be reviewing the Star Trek book, Metamorphosis. Of course, this is a Star Trek Next Generation book. Mm. Described as the first giant novel. According yes. to the uh, cover, I have no idea what the significance of that is. I couldn't actually find any other giant novels or anything that had been described as giant novels within this series. It happens to be placed directly after the events of the episode Measure of a Man. It's considered beta canon, which means it's not canon within the sources that are shown on the screen. However, it does take its cues from said sources to create the narrative. There's a couple of other points, characters specifically, that have been taken from another book in the series written by the same author, but not knowing those characters is not going to be a problem. However, you will need TNG knowledge to probably get a, get a handle on what's happening within the story. Yes. It is the ruling of this court that Lieutenant Commander Data has the freedom to choose. The one thing I would say about the cover, now that I'm thinking about it, um, it's not particularly inspired. It's the three main characters. So you've got Picard, Data, and Riker. But it's very much a Data story. Riker barely features in it at all. Picard, mm. as his usual self, frankly. Yeah. But, but I, I would still say he's not in the top three of the characters who are throughout this book. Mm. I would have preferred if it wasn't Riker, it was uh, Alaski. That would have made more sense, actually. Because she plays a... She plays a more significant role, yeah. role than Riker does, certainly. Right, so, tell us about the author. The author, Jean Laura, born in 1940, which at this point in time makes her 82 years old. Yeah. Well, don't give away a lady's age. I'm pretty sure you can do the maths. <laughs> She's got a body of work that starts back as early as 1976 uh, with an original series story called Full Moon Rising that featured in a Star Trek fanzine. She did several other pieces of work for other fanzines and finally got her big break creating official works in the original series uh, in 1984 with Vulcan Academy Murders. Hmm. So what you're saying is she started out fan fiction? Yes. Right. Okay. Metamorphosis is actually her final work published in the, in the Star Trek universe. Um, her author foreword in the book actually reports that it was a difficult time in her life but uh yeah nowadays she's a aspiring painter which proves that even at 82 you can still learn new skills anyway should we go on to another topic maybe the publication year yes it was 1990 and in that year a few things happened. First of all, Voyager 1 turned around, looked at our solar system for one last time, and took the famous image of the pale blue dot. The first McDonald's opened in Moscow. Lovely. Right. Also, Margot Robbie was born. Okay. Now I do feel old. <laughs> My final one is Tim Berners-Lee creates the first web server. Yeah, he created the protocols. Yeah, in Switzerland. Yes. All right, should we go on to characters? Okay. All right, so the main characters in the book are that of the Enterprise crew, mm -hmm. which is from series two. So we don't have Dr. Beverly Crusher, but we do have 
Dr. Pulan- Pulaski. Pulaski. There we go. However, Wesley is still part of the crew. Yes. It's very much a character study of data. It's virtually told... Well, yes. no, it is entirely told from data's point of view, isn't it? Yes. So it's uh, a full-on data novel and all about him and his experiences and his adventure he goes on. Mm. Which do feature a lot of the ramifications from the episode Measure of a Man, which, of course, is where this book directly follows from, as we've already mentioned. One of the most notable characters in the first, would you say, first act? It he probably is. is. Although it takes about half the book. Yeah, is the character of Thelia. Yep. Who comes off a little bit like a Disney princess. Yes, and she pretty much is. Mm. Uh, the sociologist Thralen, which I believe you mentioned. Yes, he's the, I would say, the main person on the TNG crew who you don't know from the series. Yeah. And then you have the characters of the Silver Paladin group, which yes. are from the previous novel that the author has written called Survivors. Uh, this... This group doesn't tend to have much characterization outside of the two main characters who are Dare, the leader of the group, and Pris, who yeah. is kind of interested in data, and that progresses as part of the story. Yeah. What do you think the themes and the settings of this book is? does create this interesting theme of why try to be something that you're not when you can explore the best person that you can be who you are yeah. i would say that's that's the theme that came out more more so than anything else to me yes it's be who you are not someone else mm. or someone you want to be be the person you were born to be. There's no one I'd rather be than me. So the book has been written almost as an episode of the, the show. There's very clearly a three-act structure in place. You've got your initial build-up, mm. um, almost like an investigation or a, a further development of what happens in the first act. And then your conclusion act at the uh, obviously at the tail end of the book. But it, if you were reading this, you'd recognize it as almost being done like an episode of the show. Yeah, I would say at least a two part of that because mm. it does feel, I wouldn't say long, but it, you do feel the breadth of it. But also, I would say it is called metamorphosis it has no connection with the um original, original series, series which has an episode called metamorphosis and of course it has no well there's no connection or theme um really to Kafka's metamorphosis anyway we'll go on to recommendations What's your brief yay or nay on it? I have a feeling we're going to disagree, but I really like this book. I, a little bit of background. This is pretty much the first TNG novel, the first Star Trek novel I owned. So there's perhaps a touch of rose tinted glasses there. I can visualize that as being an episode of the show. I can follow it along. I enjoy Data's story, I enjoy Data's journey as he passes through all of the trials that he's got to face. I think there's a couple of very well set up plot twists that happen later in the book that have been well seeded in the first part of it. And I just find it an enjoyable story. It's an interesting insight into the character that is Commander Data. Okay, that's fine. I mean, for me, I found this book 
slightly too long for what it was doing. Um, I'm not the biggest fan of Data as a character. So maybe that has something to do with it. Overall, it was interesting. It was nice. I did like it. The ending I have some niggling issues with. Like I said, there are there are some good setups and payoffs. And like that is good and sensible and all works logically. Some of the things I have an issue with is it seems a bit tropey somewhere in the middle. And some of the things that happen to data, but we'll come on to that in spoilers. Overall, I think I'm a bit I'm lukewarm Quack. on the book. It's nice, but I don't think I shall ever read it again. Okay, that's fair enough. We're still friends. <laughs> I'll get my coats. <laughs> <laughs> so, thank you for watching our review. Please join us next week for our spoiler talk on it. And if you don't wish for that, come back in a fortnight and we'll be doing another review on another completely new book. Thanks, guys. Bye. Bye. <laughs>